there are there are two kinds of questions we have <coughs> in sample size calculation. One is if I have to estimate uh, the sensitivity and specificity of the test tube test. Uh, how do I decide by some example? And sometimes you want to compare whether one is better than the other. There is a different concept. So, and uh, how do we do that? Okay. And so there are some decides to do that. So the first one is that this is the one which we wanted to see. If I have a new test as compared to gold standard, how do I estimate my sensitivity and specificity of the test? So, before it comes from a concept called Estimation. Um, just to estimate what is the sensitivity and specificity, let me skip some of the slides. So I would like to have, usually we wanted to have uh, good sensitivity and good specificity. Uh, therefore, I uh, wanted to have 80% sensitivity, so for example, 90% specificity or 80% specificity. So this has to come from you, that how good your sensitivity and specificity. And I should not be phrasing my question saying, let me have 60% sensitivity and specificity. Sometimes the committee members may not like that kind of phrasing. So you say, I would like to have minimum 80% sensitivity and specificity. Okay? Now, before we go there, we should see this is, that what is the kind of variability that 80% sensitivity and specificity can have? So it is not one value, it is likely to change if somebody repeated the study. How do I assess that variability? This is basically standard error. Standard error meaning that as you repeat the study, that today I might get 80, tomorrow 85, tomorrow, day after tomorrow 75, and so on. Now somebody repeated the study, he's not going to get 80, and so on. What is the kind of variability which can go around the 80%? That is called a standard error, okay? not standard deviation, standard error. Standard error talks about the variability of your statistics. Statistics here is sensitivity and specificity. Okay, this is very important. So therefore, now when I say, I need to think about how much variability that I could give to that 80%. Okay, sometimes people call it as how much, what kind of error that I would allow when I do this study, it could vary by 5% or it could vary by 10%. Some people call it as unlevelable error, some people call it as a how precisely you want to be estimated. So we in our institution use the word precise, how precisely you want to be estimated that 80%. Okay? So therefore, this is you have to have some idea about the standard error. What I mean is that the variability. Okay? Now let me explain this about normal distribution function. Here you see this is your sensitivity or specificity and uh, plus or minus one standard error from the sensitivity covers 68% of the area. Plus or minus two standard error of your sensitivity covers 95% of the area. And that is what I wanted to have. So this is, so this basically that this is what the confidence interval means. When I repeat the study 100 times, out of which 90% of the time that the parameter, the sensitivity exercise will lie inside the range of, inside the range and five times will not. So when I say 80% sensitivity with the plus or minus 5%, say that, that 95% of the time, whatever I estimate will fall between 75 to 85. That is what it means. So therefore, now, how do we define our precision? Therefore, see here, this is your 80%, and how confident that you wanted to have. So, 95% confident that I fix my error or the precision within which that the estimate should fall. That is, plus is times the standard error. This is 95% confident, and this is your standard error. So therefore, the Z value from the normal distribution approximately two standard error. This is what we discussed about. The star minus two standard error covers 95% of the area. Is it right? So this is, when you go back to normal, this is what I said, 1.96 times approximately two standard error. This, this to this covers 95% of the area. So for 
what do I, you cannot say I would get only 80. What you are saying that that the estimate which I get after the study will be somewhere between this limit to this limit. So you you will find out. It could be 75, it could be 85, or in between 75 to 85. So you are not saying this is what my value is. Begin with some value. Saying that somewhere in between this limit to this limit, I'm 95% confident if I study this number, that will give me that value. So that is how we need to phrase it. So therefore, this is a standard error formula. Now, what do we mean by precision? Precision, this is what the minus 2 standard error, plus 2 standard error. If my sensitivity is 80%, if I phrase my uh, precision 10%, that's 70%, 90%. This 10% is called precision of the estimate. We understand this. So when you say, when I say, I say it could vary from 70 to 90%, precision is only half of that difference. Please remember, this is very important. So precision is only this. Two standard error. This is, this is standard error. Two standard error away is the higher level. Two standard array away, this side is lower. So when I say, when I talk to you, that you say I would like to have 90% sensitivity. Then you say how precisely you want to do it. You say 10% on either side. So your precision is 10%. Okay. What we mean by is that plus two standard error or minus two standard errors. <coughs> so that is how we need to phrase it. So this is your, how are we going to use this? So this is a simple formula. This is your sensitivity. And the complement of the sensitivity is this. If this is 80%, this is 20%. 100 minus 80. Okay. 100 minus Batteries, batteries. So this is um, so therefore this is so for example this is 80 percent. 100 minus 80 is 20 percent. The complement of sensitivity is this, and z alpha is that z value is two, approximately. Do you remember in the normal distribution, I showed you 1.96 roughly. It is two plus. 2 minus 2 covers 95% of the area. So therefore, this is approximately 4. 2 squared is 4. So people usually remember this as a 4 p cubed by d squared. d is your error or precision. So here we are phrasing it. C said that she wanted to have 90% sensitivity with the precision of 10%. Therefore, this is 10. Precision is d. Now you could calculate this, how many sample size you need to study. So please remember, this talks about only sensitivity. Okay? But whenever you talk about a diagnostic test, there are two components. So many times we see proposals in the IRB that say that my sensitivity is 80% and what is the kind of number I should study? 80, 20, 10 squared. Precision is 10. I would like to have 10% precision, which means it could be 70% or it could be 90% at the end of the study. So therefore, so 64 subjects I need to study. That is how IRB proposals come to us. So, is that right? What does it say? Sensitivity means deceased. Okay? This tells you you need to study 64 subjects who are deceased, like what we have been talking about case control method. Do you remember? So, you have to study deceased 64. And if you have similar number as non-deceased, you need to say 64 non-deceased should also be studied. 
This is based on case control method. Your thumb taught you about when you want to just say how good you are, the new test is, you just do a first case series and then case control study design. That tells you how good your test is and then plan for something else. So this is a very simple case control study design. But a lot of discussion based on that. Uh, Dr. Pratap's um, lecture that you need to have a cohort or cross-sectional approach. What is cross-sectional approach? Okay. What is cross-sectional approach which deals with consecutive patients coming to you? If I say, now, 64 cases of gonorrhea have to be studied. We spoke about what is the prevalence of gonorrhea in CMC was 5%. 4% or 5%. If I tell you you need to study 64 gonorrhea cases, so 60, let's say 60 gonorrhea cases. If I study 100 cases, 100 samples, I'll get 5 gonorrhea. To get 60 gonorrhea cases, I need to study 1,200. Okay. So 1,200 subjects or samples to be consecutively screened to get 64 or 60 uh, samples of gonorrhea. Then you are left with the plenty of non-gonorrhea samples. Okay? So therefore, do you want to deal with the rest of them? Or you wanted to take sample of them? Do you understand this? This is a cross-sectional approach. Consecutive samples are uh, you know, used for your study. That is a limitation in, but what is the, the point, what, what is the advantage you get, it gives, helps you to find out what is the prevalence of the problem in your hospital, and your lab, and so on. That is an extra mileage that you would get from the study, cross-sectional studies. Otherwise, it seems to me just a bit expensive. So mostly we suggest that, first you do a case control study approach, because you know who is case and who is non-case. You have plenty of non-cases. Take sample of them, 64, and do it. So okay. uh, here we have found around 60 to be the diseased. Uh, out of 1,200 rest are non-diseased. So do we have to kind of take a ratio, like you take a control of 1 is to 4 or something like that? Do we have to restrict here or we No, you can take, because uh, I said you can take sample of them. Uh, or uh, the, as I told you that uh, the the consecutive cases give, helps you to find out what is the prevalence of a problem. Now if you say, no, 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 this is very expensive to do that kind of work, then you can say one is to two or one is to three controls will be taken. So that will also improve your precision, not power. Please remember, the power concept comes only when you test the hypothesis. One is better than the other. Okay, that is where you use the word jargon as power. Power is related to testing the hypothesis. That means you say there is a difference. There is a difference. Okay? There is a difference or there is no difference. That is power. The study is able to find the difference statistically significant when there is a real difference existed. That is called power. But we are not talking about the difference here. We are talking about how precisely I am estimating. As you increase your sample size, your error becomes smaller and smaller. Precision becomes higher and higher. Okay. So you just understand how precisely you are estimating. So therefore, that when you say sample size for a diagnostic test, you need to know there are cases and there are controls. Am I going to have 50-50? The case control study design is very unbiased in terms of many other things. Like morning, we, yesterday we talked about kappa. Kappa is unbiased when the prevalence is 40 to 60 percent, and so on and so forth. Therefore, this, these statistics are seen. Okay? Now, this is important. Don't present only so many subjects to be studied. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. If you wanted to have a cross-sectional approach, you have to have some idea about what is the prevalence of the organism or disease in your setting, and then to get so many number, how will I inflate that number? That has to be understood. 
Is that okay? Now this is this is what this has been explained. Now the question is how precise, how do I decide my precision? The rule of thumb is that 20% of your sensitivity or specificity would be the maximum precision. When I aim for 80% sensitivity, 80% of 20% is, you can either go up to 15%. So usually you put 10%. So when you put 10%, you need to study 64 deceased and 60. So usually in the absence of any guidelines, so for example, the precision is a bit, uh, how precisely that I want to do, study the problem. So 80%, Tell me, how do you like to have your precision? What is the range for 80%? Could it be 70% or 90%? Or it could be 75% or 85%? How precisely you want to be saying this? Okay? So if I put, say for example here, this is 70 to 90, I'm talking about 10%. Precision. So you need to study 64 seconds. When I put phi square, what happens? 80 into 20 into 4. 256. So the big jump is the number. So you may not be able to say 256 subjects. So therefore we can say, okay, if I put 5%, 256. If I put 10%, 64. Let me study 100. Can I do this? Yes, you can do this. Then you would try, if I study 100 subjects, that will give me a sensitivity of about 80% with the precision of 5 to 10%. You understand this? So instead of the American way of writing it, that they don't, who told you that this is your precision? How do you know that you will end up with this kind of precision? So therefore, what they do is, if I study this number, my precision should be somewhere between five to 10. Okay? So don't say this is my precision. But that is how they write the sentences. So either way you can write it. If in India, we say minus this, 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 therefore this is a number. Everybody is happy about it. So they look at it, do the calculation. Yes, the calculation is correct. So this is this is very simple using sensitivity and species. Though there is a topic on diagnostic oscillation, which combines both sensitivity and species. I have never used in my sandwich, it should be like a case of all serious.